Uh, welcome another edition of What the Fuck Happenings in the YouTube Atheist Community. Not much happening. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to really strain to come up with some kind of something. Anyway, I had power failures and all kinds of stuff today, so this is going to be really late. Probably won't be posted till Monday. So that's pretty bad. But anyway, I didn't get much sleep, so another complaint. Um, I'll add on some walking talks part for Stickham, I guess, so I'll just do the regulars. Uh, I guess there's not much else, there's nothing outstanding. Um, I did hear the, um, masked analyst guy got suspended, I don't know why. So there's been people mirroring the video, but since I don't know why he got suspended, it just doesn't seem, I mean, it's kind of stupid to defend something, you don't know what the particulars of it are. So I had Karina, she made in her weekly video, uh, the feminism thing, sort of talked it to death in stick cam. But, uh, you know, she makes good videos. I mean, it's really coherent, and she writes, or she thinks a good, you know, she edits together a good script. And uh, so it's a, kind of a persuasive argument that uh, women are doing okay. Uh, the Modern Mystic, he really, I like, really like the video. I, I think I mentioned it earlier, but anyway, I'll mention it again. Maybe, you know, I'll post a link to it. So it was a good video, um, just pointing out that, yeah, life's futile. So we should probably get a grip on that fact. That should be the primary fact. The prime directive of the human race should be trying to deal with that futility issue. It's kind of important. I'll do stick cam edition, this part anyway. Uh, so yeah, interesting night last night. Uh, first I had a real problem creating the room because stick cam was broken and so I had to waste an hour <laughs> just trying to get a room to work. And so another guy made a room and it actually worked and so we were we were in debate cabbage all night, all night, which is a little bit funny. Um, but there's a pretty good turnout, so people did find the place. And uh, there's actually people in the blog TV room, which was kind of surprising, because uh, people usually bail out of there. But anyway, uh, so it was, it was pretty interesting, and uh, it was kind of a good night. Weird subjects, though. Uh, we didn't really do a lot of the hard philosophy stuff. We did more of the, you know, uh, feminism, uh, circumcision, uh, <laughs> burka, um, some social issues, healthcare, this, that, or the other thing. Uh, so anyway, it was just kind of a, a weird mix, not the usual routine. Um, so Math, Math Fails was in there for quite a while, and he was kind of funny, and uh, yeah, it was sort of a, sort of just a good time kind of room, which was okay considering how hard it was to get the room open and. I was a bit frustrated with all that, so I guess it was kind of good that it wasn't too obnoxious in the evening. Uh, you know, the end of the night, you know, well, you know, in the morning, uh, it was kind of irritating that the hackers broke the room a couple of times, and, you know, that really just kind of screws up continuity. Uh, so anyway, it was a good, good night. Uh, a couple of new women's, which was really good. Uh, the Swedish girl, uh, you know, the four-wheeler hamster Swedish girl. <laughs> That's come up with a name for her. Um, she was in there, which is nice. Uh, maybe I'll post a link. Um, and uh, what else? Yeah, there was another one. <laughs> yeah, another one. It's really nice. I can remember names so well. You know, square, round, something or other. And she was pretty cool. And uh, Karina was there. And it was, uh, you know, California actually showed up. I haven't seen her in a while. She actually was um, in the room in a car, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, technology and all. It's pretty amazing. Uh, but anyway, uh, so yeah, it was, it was an interesting evening. So I don't know if I have that much to say. Um, you know, Dario, the regulars were there. And uh, it was just, uh, it was okay. Yeah, that's it. Well, we did talk about Thunderford. I guess I might as well talk about him some more. Um, look, I didn't mean to dump on Thunderford. I did say in the video that, you know, he did okay with his, I apologize, I kind of just, you know, wasn't very aggressive and all that kind of crap, and he explained. And I said that, so I mean, you know, these people getting a little panicked, like I'm dumping on Thunderfoot. I'm not doing that. I mean, I still would like to debate him, <laughs> you know, on something meaningful, because I think he is a bit of a phantasmagorical. I mean, I think he... I think he thinks, you know, human beings in the universe go together like, you know, peanut butter and jelly or something. And, uh, you know, life is fucked up. It isn't pretty colors and little planets and, you know, it's just, it's not the Carl Sagan vision. Humanity doesn't have much of a purpose but to consume and reproduce, you know, get its jollies, 
well, we're here as individual consciousnesses, and it's not really much of a grand ambition. So, uh, yeah, I like to come, you know, and that to me is the consequence of atheism. Uh, the fact that there's no intelligent designer behind the universe means that it was created by dumb forces. And dumb forces aren't likely to engineer a brilliant system. And there's nothing brilliant about uh, cutthroat competition, you know, blood and guts all over the floor. It's just nature's a slaughterhouse. Uh, it's not elegant and magnificent and all that crap. Um, certainly we can be impressed because we're easy to impress, <laughs> but that doesn't mean much. The fact that people get a little awestruck uh, doesn't mean much because we don't have much of a standard. But anyway, that's philosophy, so I won't argue that here. Who else got to talk about? Well, the Amazing Atheist did a couple of videos. I mean, one of them on morality again. And he has this whole convoluted explanation of culture and all this other crap. And it's really not that complicated. There's ethics. And you have a social contract, basically, to protect ourselves from each other. And uh, that's sort of different from what can be established as... Um, rules to live by, which are a little bit different. So yeah, there's two kinds of law. There's the law we have because it's necessary, like you can't be a vigilante, you can't impose justice by yourself, that kind of crap. And uh, the laws we have that have something to do with a majority opinion about what's right and wrong. So, or whatever. It's not that interesting a subject either. But that social contract thing is kind of important part of the whole thing. And, uh, what else? Yeah, this other video was, you know, ex <laughs> making excuses for why people are fat. Uh, so, whatever. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, who else? Uh, you know, the regulars, the Highlander guy did his part of his what the fuck, and so maybe he has more parts coming. Um, we're not really substantially arguing, but I do find it <laughs> a little insufferable, you know, when he posts links to these, you know, silly 9-11 videos. Uh, steel buildings never fall down. Yeah, well, steel buildings never have fully loaded passenger planes fly in them at 400 miles an hour with the deliberate intent to cause as much damage as possible. So let's do that experiment a few other places, and I bet we can get some buildings to fall down. I mean, just stupid arguments. Well, steel doesn't melt at that temperature. Cars would melt. I mean, it's really dumb crap. Just denies the reality of metal fatigue. We saw what happened to the buildings. Huge, gigantic motherfucking explosion. Fires burning for, you know, whatever, half an hour. Uh, you know, intense crap. It was no big, huge, giant surprise the buildings fell down. They endured catastrophic damage. It's just silly to talk about it any other way. And it's that whole Building 7 thing. I sort of made the point last night in Stickham, but, you know, when the World Trade Center buildings fell down, they essentially probably created a ground force that was as comparable to a Richter 8 or something earthquake, you know, within a you know 100 or 200 square foot radius. I mean, it probably did substantial damage, vibrated the hell out of Building 7, which was on fire for an hour. So that's no big surprise that that building collapsed, too. Um, you know, it's just silly, the whole idea that, uh, anyone would care about Building 7 anyway. Who the fuck could possibly care? The World Trade Center falls down. Who's going to care about, you know, a tinker toy out in the yard or something? I mean, Building 7's completely irrelevant. I mean, why, why would the conspiracy involve that building? It doesn't make any difference. Uh, it's just silly. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's probably enough for the walking part. I'll do a back home part and we'll call it a video. Sorry, really, really am tired. Uh, I only got a couple hours sleep. So, uh, yep, till the next video, whatever that will be. Probably be a Nick video. He did a, yeah, Nick did a video, man. Life is really bullshit. It's really a great video. Except he said one line in there just kind of irritating. Like he said, what's the difference whether you live a happy life and die or whether you live a miserable life and die? Well, there's obviously a difference. Life has no purpose, yes. But there is a difference between, you know, insane futility and just plain stupid futility. 
I mean, you know, the futility would be preposterously stupid if we spent it in horror and suffering. The futility is only idiotic, you know, if we're happily futile. But there's a difference. I mean, if you're going to choose something, you're certainly going to choose the less horrible futility. But uh, the bottom line is, the important point is that it's futile. You can't win this life game. It's desire contrived by natural forces. The desire is silly. There's no point in creating it. And uh, it's a game you can't win. So anyway, till the uh, rest of the video or whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Blah.